Hi, it's Dale from Reedy's here and we are live in store just taking a look at the, the new Casio Grand Hybrid range with Chris. Um, Oh, yeah. Sorry, Chris. So we're looking at the GP500 and the GP300, which is just behind it now. So what can you tell us about this new range that you've got? Well, it's it's a very different um, instrument for, for Casio. And actually, I can't think of any other instruments at the moment that are the same as this, because this is actually produced by two different companies. Mm -hmm. So Casio designed all the electronics. But actually, a lot of this instrument is down to a partnership that Casio have with an acoustic piano maker um, called Beckstein. Pretty and famous one. <laughs> yeah, really, really famous. Beckstein yeah. have been going for over 150 years. The advantages to that are actually in the feel of the keys, and that's really what makes this piano special. Um, these keys on this piano are the same keys that you'd find on a Beckstein grand piano. Um, We've also got a so hammer just, action. Just on that, yeah. Um, so the key. So what, what is the key made out of? Is it? I've, I've read a little bit about it. I, I know there's. It's wood, or is it? Is yeah. it part wood, or is it? No, it's all wood, and, right. and that's something else which is very different about this piano. Not many other digital pianos have full wooden keys. Yeah. Sometimes they're part wood, a bit plastic. Mm. These ones are, are all wood. Um, which means that the key is the right, it's the right feel essentially, it's mm. the right density, it's the right weight, um, it reacts in the right way, um, and the touch that you get, the feel of the key when you play is a very, yeah. very natural touch. So that's something that you've been working with yeah. Beckstein, obviously yeah. know what they're doing, 150 yeah. years. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So with, with the action itself, how does it compare to a, a, a Beckstein? grand piano that you, you an acoustic piano well, essentially it's the same concept really um mm. it, it's modeled on a on a, a grand piano action um mm. when you press a key on here um what it does is it actually lifts a hammer which when you look inside the the um case here yeah, under the you lid can right you can see when you play a note actually the hammer does lift up that's really important to have mm. a hammer uh, in a digital piano, it makes the, the key feel exactly as it should. Yeah. The the recoil from the hammer, the little bounce you get when you actually lift off the key, it basically translates into a really natural feel. Yeah. Rather than because obviously um, in the past, really the way people have got that sort of effect is with counterweights yeah. and artificially. That's the way we used to do it. That's yeah. Right. That's artificially right. sort of yeah. trying to make it feel as if there's a hammer, but this is yep. actually a hammer so the it's a full thing. length key it's got a hammer on there it's it's the same wood yes which beckstein used to make grand piano so yes. it's a, 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 as close as you're going to get really in the it's, digital world it, I it mean. brings the whole world of of trying to recreate that experience of an acoustic piano yeah. digitally and it, it is important it isn't it i mean a lot of pianists will agree when you sit down at a digital piano it's about the feel it's like it's about translating yeah. the feel of an yes. acoustic piano as close as you can get it yeah, absolutely. into the digital world yeah. and to have a Beckstein key that is a solid piece of, did you say it was spruce? Yes it spruce is, wood. spruce, yeah. Uh, right. So it's a torn wood. Yep. Um, to have that inside of a digital piano and to have the hammers in there and everything working as it would an acoustic piano is incredibly important because the feel's important. You need to feel as if you're playing that grand piano. Yeah. It doesn't want you don't want to feel like it's you know something that's pretending to do something. It, you just want to be able to close your eyes and. Well, that's right. When you sit and play you yeah. know, an instrument, you can tell pretty much instantly whether or not you you believe in it. Yeah. And the nice thing about these two pianos actually is is for me as a pianist. When I sit down, I want to play it. Yeah. Uh, the feel I get from it and That's the, the important. sound, you know, it's that sort of, you can't really define it. Mm. But when you sit and play something like this, you, 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 you do want to play it and enjoy it. Um, and I think it's got a lot to do with the action and the, you know, the, the feel of the keys. Yeah. It has to, of course it, really it does, does, yeah. So we've got the action covered. Beck Stein have, have happily sorted you out with that. <laughs> um, so what else are we talking here with these new Grand Hybrids? Well, um, there's a lot here that's, that's new, not just for Casio, but for the, the, the digital piano industry as a whole. Um, one of the nice things about this is that we've got three different piano sounds. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got three um, sort of pianos named after different places in Europe. They're all European pianos. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we've got one sound called the Berlin Grand. Mm -hmm. Now that is a Beckstein, and that's something else that Beckstein worked with us on. Um, it's a sample of a, a Beckstein D282, which is a nine-foot concert grand piano. Yes. Uh, about 115,000 pounds worth of piano, <laughs> which, <laughs> which we sampled, yeah. uh, let us at it. Um, and that's the, that's what we call the Berlin not, sound. Not a bad piano to sort of cram into a no, little. It's the very best. Digital you know, the very best piano, piano, is it? Um, I'll take you through them in a minute. But yeah. the other two here are Hamburg and Vienna. Now, mm. if you're into piano history, you'll know that there are other famous piano makers I that think, are in Hamburg and Vienna. Yeah, I think we can sort of guess. Probably. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> where, who they are. Uh, we can't officially say. No. Um, but we have obtained those instruments and sampled them. Yes. Um, and they do sound different. Shall I just show you? Yeah, yeah. Let's okay. Have a so. Um, I'll just play something very simply, we can hear the difference in the, the tone. Um, this is the Berlin sound, this is our Beckstein first of all. And then we go on to the Hamburg. And if we do the same thing with the Vienna. So the three different yeah. samples. We haven't just taken one piano and altered it slightly. Yeah, it's called it completely things. different. It's, it's a totally different thing. A totally it's different the tone of, of it, really. I mean, you can tell straight away um, when I've played pianos, older pianos, um, where there's a different piano sound, like a bright piano, a yeah. mellow piano. You can tell it's basically the same piano, but yes. they've EQ'd it a little bit different yeah. or you know, put, put an effect on it to make it sound different. But that, it's, it's actually the tone Obviously, you'll be able to hear it. it's the tone of the piano itself. It's not one piano that's been altered to make it sound slightly different. Right. It is right. a different totally piece different. entirely. To have three different sounds in it is mm. something else. No one else has done it yet. Yeah. It's really, <laughs> well, really very nice. Yes. Really, very nice. Um, things, other things to show you, I suppose, um, in terms of things that Casio have really done. So Beckstein worked on the piano action and the, the feel of the keys. Mm -hmm. um, one of the nice little things that both these pianos do is they have something called concert play. Okay. Um, and that's really thinking about, you know, especially in my own case, as an aspiring pianist, one of the things I'd always love to do is play with an orchestra. Of course. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm never gonna, I know, I'm never gonna play with a real orchestra. Um, you might do. But, well, but... I don't know, maybe. <laughs> a bit more practice, perhaps. Yeah. But um, what we've got here actually are some real recordings of uh, a, a session orchestra from Japan. Um, we produce some arrangements for piano and orchestra. All right. And I've got a book here that actually does come with every GP piano, so it doesn't matter whether it's this one or the 300, um, and some music to play. And we've got various different pieces in here, some easy pieces, some difficult pieces, concertos, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And there is a big difference with these as opposed to things that you know, other manufacturers have done before. Real orchestra this time. The idea is that I play over the top. Orchestral recordings, they're not synthesized, yeah, you it's can not MIDI file, away. you can. Feels you? a bit more realistic, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, because you, you get the sound of the, the string vibrato, you get the atmosphere of a real recording, mm. and I can slow that down if I want to, if I want to practice it. Um, and I've got lots of different songs in there. There's 15 songs in the book, which is free, um, but this is an ongoing process, so 
Um, on the Casio website, you can download the music score and recordings. Okay. I think for another, it's about 30, it's more than 30. Plenty um, to go up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and they're all free, so you yeah. don't have to pay any more money. It's a, it's a nice way of developing a library of, of, of music to play. It just makes it a little bit more exciting, doesn't it? Because yeah. it's all well and good playing uh, in your own home, but like you said, aspiring pianists, you want to feel as if you're, you know, heading that orchestra, Absolutely. playing the melody, Absolutely. keeping everyone in time, all Absolutely. that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. It's, and it's a nice feature to have on there. Being it, part of an ensemble, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is a musical instrument at the end of the day, and it's it's supposed to be with other musical instruments yeah. to create the full the full picture. So it's a it's a nice thing to, to put in there. That. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So that's concert play. Mm -hmm. um, is that? Can I just ask? That, is that on both the five hundred and that's the three hundred? That's just what I was going. Oh right, yeah, sorry, I've butted in there. <laughs> no, you haven't at all. Yeah. So everything we've talked about so far yeah. is the same. Doesn't matter if you have a GP three hundred or the five hundred. Yeah. So we we have the same sound system. Mm -hmm. We have the same keyboard, the same sounds, and we have concert play. Mm -hmm. So they're they're common to both. Um, there are a few things on the five hundred that are not obviously included on the 300. Um, obviously the most obvious thing is that the, the finish is different. Yeah, so, so this it's is polished. polished. Yeah. That's a, a satin black finish. Mm -hmm. um, they both recreate the sound of the grand piano, but the GP500, this one, has a, an extra set of what we call string resonance. Okay. Um, thinking back to acoustic pianos, the very large concert grand pianos, nine footers, yeah. have sometimes a fourth string um, okay. in the very top part of the piano. So from about here on the piano upwards, all these notes have mm -hmm. added strings on them to make a, a sort of a more sparkling, brighter sound. Mm. Um, and the GP500 simulates that effect. Okay. So in, in sort of real world terms, what that means is with this one, you get a, a slightly brighter, yeah. bigger sound. It's like you're playing a nine-foot grand piano. All right. Whereas that, it's a great sound. Uh, again, same recordings, same samples, perhaps more like a, a baby grand piano. Right, okay. So you're getting sort of the full size, full experience with the 500, the 300 a little bit scaled yeah. down. Yeah, a little bit but, scaled yeah. down. Yeah. The other thing with the 500 is that, you know, there are so many settings on here that I could change if I want to. Mm. So we've talked very briefly about the three grand piano sounds. Yeah. There are electric pianos, strings, lots of different instruments in here as well that I could access on the keys. What you can do, of course, is you can have a different sound on the right hand to the left hand. You can change the brightness of the tone, all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. Now, with the 500, we've got a way of very quickly storing my favorite setups. And it's called scene memories. Okay. Okay. So each musical scene, what I can do if I want to, is very quickly um, change the sound. So I've just pressed a couple of buttons here, and what I've got is a, a piano on the top with a bass uh, underneath. That, right, so that's sort of a preset that you can decide whatever I've you just, want. Yep, yeah. I'll, before we started, I'm, I made that very, very quickly. Okay. If I didn't have that, I'd have to be programming where the, the sound changed on the keys, mm -hmm. what sound I wanted. Yeah. Um, you know, and I really like that setting. I'm going to use that a few times if I'm into jazz music. Mm. Uh, it's really nice to have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I can do scene number two again very quickly. Piano and strings. And again, that would take me a lot of time yeah. to do on, uh, on another instrument. Mm. You can achieve that effect on the 300, but a little you bit can't, more work. Yeah, yeah, you can't recall it very quickly. Yeah. The other thing that the, this particular one has, the 500, uh, is it has more sounds. So okay. you know, it's got more electric pianos, more bass sounds, other things on it. So I think there are more sounds on here than there are on the 300. Yeah. But, but other than that, so you've got the same action. Yep. Which is. Really, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's really right. Um, you've got the three pianos. Yeah, it's just those little added, added bonuses that make it a little bit easier. Yeah, a little bit more fulfilling when you're playing. Really, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, when you compare this to like other digital pianos that are in the market, what would you say is the fundamental feature that makes this a step above? Because there's a lot of talk about this being like a new 
sort of venture and it's it's not really like a lot of the digital pianos that are out there it's mm. its own thing mm. would you say it's the action yes. um right so to it's be the, honest yeah. i would yeah <laughs> i mean you know when you sit down and, and play a piano you can tell very very quickly through the feel of the keys and it's a very complex combination of the feel yeah. you get and the sound that comes back you know there is a really great combination here of, of a lovely grand piano action mm. and you know as you said it's really that crucial thing yeah which sets this apart from so many different things yeah. i mean it's not you know every day now we've, we've had digital pianos for 30 years yeah you know to actually call something unique and special it really has to be yeah, I, yeah. I think well, that, that's why i asked the question yeah, cause i genuinely yeah. think with these gp pianos mm. they have earned that right to say it because yeah. You know, nobody has put a, a, a hammer action in a digital piano at, at mm. these prices before. And you can really tell you know, in the difference of the feedback you get, yeah. um, the response, uh, it's really great to play. Yeah. And that's, that's the best way you can describe it. And it's fun to watch someone play actually, to see yeah. the hammers moving and yeah. it feels like a real living instrument. It does. Um, that's really important. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid and you know, looking in the grand piano we had at school, yeah, yeah, yeah. the first thing you look at is the actual. Watching everything. The, that's right, it's the hammers. You can get the same sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so it's brilliant. It's exciting to watch as well as it is to, yeah. to play as well. It's really, really useful, really good. Right, so sh shall we take a look at a few of the different sounds that yep. we've got available? Okay. Um, should we just, I mean, perhaps it's a good thing to go through those three grand pianos. Yeah, just give us a view of the different bit. styles, yeah. Yeah. Well, as I said earlier, the, the Berlin sound, the Beckstein, is great for perhaps more classical music. So as I mentioned earlier, the GP500 has something called duplex scaling resonance, mm -hmm. which is the, the feature that recreates the sound of a, a big nine foot grand piano. Um, so it really affects the top part of the piano. So if I was going to be playing something up, you know, for here, for example, That's really where I notice the difference in the, mm. in the playing and the features. And of course, lastly, there are lots of different things on here that means you can connect to computers and iPads and all that sort of thing. Um, we've got over here on the right hand side, there's a USB socket there. And you can obviously plug a memory stick in there can save your performances as an audio recording if you want to. Straight out onto the... Straight out, yeah. yeah. And any effects that you apply, for example, like the reverbs, mm -hmm. um, dual sounds, that obviously also gets recorded straight onto oh, the right. stick as so well. So it's a full really performance, good. yeah. Yeah. What about, can you actually bring songs in? Because obviously we, we saw that you could have a full orchestra playing behind you. Can yeah. you bring your own music and load that yes, in Yes, well. you can. As long yeah. as what you've got is a WAV file, yeah. um, it can be any WAV file you like, mm. it'll play back anything, and it's very easy to find via the screen, of course. You yeah. just, you just so you can it. have oh. any backing track you want. Basically. Any backing track you like. Yeah. Um, cool. We've also got, as well as the USB over there, we've underneath the piano, you'll find another USB socket. Mm. That's the one you'd use if you want to connect it to a PC or a Mac. 
uh, or an iPad. It'll work with an iPad. Right, okay, uh, so you can have an amazing action yeah, sh yeah. into an iPad. <laughs> That's a really good point, actually, because, of course, you've got the grand piano action. You yeah. can use that to control any software you like, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, which is really, really handy. We've also got MIDI sockets, mm. because um, a lot of these are going into studios where for one reason or another, MIDI, you know, MIDI Still connections are preferred <laughs> over USB. Right. Um, uh, you know, so that's that's on there as well. Yeah. You've got line output, so you can plug this into a mixer, mm -hmm. um, and also line input as well. Yeah. So again, if you're using a software or you know something that needs speakers, you okay. can use the speakers on the piano to, to uh, output your computer as well. Yeah. So really good. with that as well, you could you could use it to. If you've got songs on your phone or something like that, you yep. could use the line in yep, the um, line and in. play along instead of loading it on to the USB. You can yep. just plug it straight in and play Absolutely. whenever you want, can't you, as well? Yeah. Um, yeah, so in terms of learning piano on here, is the is it just one headphone output or...? It's actually two. Right, okay. Um, yeah, so the headphones socket is underneath here again on the, on the left-hand side. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's two um, headphone sockets. So that means that a student could be wearing a pair of headphones, mm. teacher can sit next to them and listen as well. And not disturb the parents. And not disturb. <laughs> yeah. Or if you've got two people playing a piano duet, of yeah. course, you can play duets with both the headphones on as well <laughs> if you want to. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so that's, I think that's pretty much everything covered there, it looks incredible. Um, it's nice to see Casio teaming up with Beckstein. I mean, mm. that's something to be shouted oh, about. Um, it, it feels amazing, obviously, that's the one thing you can't get from this video is the, the feel of the piano itself, but I can assure you it's, it, it does feel fantastic. It feels really realistic. Um, one of the closest representations you can get to a real acoustic piano. Um, just one thing to mention, if you do buy it from Reedy's, we will install it anywhere in the UK for you. We have our own in-house team who will come and set it up for you, take away the packaging, you get um, some free uh, free store headphones and, and book and things like that when you buy it from us. So if you are interested, just check out the link below. Um, we also have a blog article comparing the two pianos as well. So you can read up all about it, do your research, or obviously you can call us up or send us an email and we'll, we'll help you out. But thanks, Chris. Thanks for showing us that. Thank you. Great piano. Thanks.